This community is known for rallying um, and being a very close-knit community, uh, and we still are, even since we're doing it via webcam and phone call more than we, we, we were three, four weeks ago. Um, and we'll get back to, to normalcy, hopefully in the more near future, uh, but we will get back there. There is, there is a light at the end of that tunnel. Uh, we just have to be diligent and keep, keep doing what we need to do to make sure that the light's still there. Now we've got CEO of the Bellingham Regional Chamber of Commerce, Guy Ochiogrosso. Uh, thanks for joining me here today, Guy. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, the business community and the chamber community and how, how we're all being affected by COVID-19 and this emerging crisis. But welcome, Guy. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me or having this conversation virtually from, from my house to yours. Indeed. Yes. Well, I just wanted to talk about kind of briefly, what is, what is it that you're seeing in the community with, with the chamber membership? I know there's a ton of businesses that are affected by this, mm -hmm. um, different industries affected in different ways. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about just what you are seeing, who you're hearing from, and some of the stories that you've, uh, you've been exposed to? Sure. Uh, one of the things that I've Long before this um, pandemic and economic crisis, uh, one of the things I've tended to say quite a bit is you've seen one business, you've seen one business. And that holds true for this situation as well. Uh, every business will be impacted and is being impacted uh, very differently uh, from retail to manufacturing to nonprofits. Uh, to distribution centers, and even when you look within industries themselves, large retail versus small retail uh, versus online retail. Uh, I think every industry has to navigate its own nuances uh, as, we, as we progress through this. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know that we, you know, we took a walk the other day and, and went and visited a lot of the restaurants in town mm -hmm. that are really struggling with just the mandates that have been put on them. And what uh, what would you say are the hardest hit businesses in town? I think I, I would say from what we've seen at this point, uh, some of the hardest hit, and it's hard to to say one industry was hit harder than the other. Uh, our local hotels, um, our lodging industry, is substantially impacted uh, due to travel restrictions. Uh, you, as you said, our restaurants, um, in, in kind of in conjunction with restaurants, any type of what we would call third place, that place that's not your home, not your office, uh, the, the place that you want to go in between going to those places, uh, which are, again, the bars, the restaurants, the entertainment facilities, uh, they've certainly been impacted. And now, uh, as of the governor's um, stay home mandate, uh, probably impacted even more so. Uh, I would say uh, retail, uh, particularly smaller retail, has certainly seen an impact. Uh, our airport, uh, with the cancellation of uh, the Allegiant flight, uh, certainly, and that's probably in response to a lot of the travel restrictions. And, um, and again, not something that we could not have foreseen, uh, but again, still certainly an impact. And then one that I think will certainly have some lasting impact is our nonprofits. A uh, number of events have had to, have had to be canceled um, and I think will be. Uh, spring is a really active time uh, for our community from community events and fundraisers and uh, most of which have had to be canceled and uh, what I'm seeing at this point for those that are being postponed, they're being pushed uh, into fall, which is an already busy, right, uh, busy year, as you way. very well know. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the impact on an annual basis for our nonprofits from an operational standpoint. Um, I think just just this week it was announced that our signature event and the signature event that we as the chamber used to run um, that really identifies and um, is part of our identity as a community ski to see. 
uh, race was canceled. So uh, this is having impacts that, that we certainly will feel for quite some time. What do you think that economic impact, if you look at the holistic picture of our community, the entire business community, uh, the way that people get their goods and services and you know, into the future, how, how is this going to, I mean, I know it's hard, impossible to say, but what are some, can we draw from history on some of these things and, and what, what is the next couple of years going to look like in our community, do you think, as a, as a border community, as a, mm-hmm. you know, we're dependent on tourism in a lot of ways, what, yeah. um, what are some of those broader economic impacts that, uh, that we're gonna be facing? So number one, I would say there's no way to know the number at this point. Uh, Currently, we're working with the Port of Bellingham's economic development team to create a survey. Uh, And if we were to send that out this week, it it would probably be even too early to tell some of the data points. Uh, It's still uh, something that we hope to send out in the near future so we can assess uh, the immediate impacts. And I would say the best way to answer your question is very similar to, uh, let would say, like a mosaic painting, right? every piece of this economy and every business is going to have a different timeline uh, of returning. Uh, Because our supply chain domestically is still, and even I would say uh, from the continent perspective, is still seems to be maintaining our truck levels uh, crossing our border here in Whatcom County uh, is still at the same level. Like we're still maintaining that distribution center or that distribution system between uh, the U.S. and Canada, uh, which is good for some of the distribution aspects uh, of our community. And you think that that will probably relay to some of the uh, large retail aspects. And when we think of uh, cross-border commerce, we often think of um, retail. Uh, that's the, I think, the more visible one. It's it's much more broad uh, than that. You've got the travel uh, and hospitality piece. Like I said, the airport uh, is certainly impacted by the by the border. And then we also have a lot of what I would say employers locally that employ Canadian residents and vice versa, and a lot of Canadian-owned companies um, that are on this side. And so. So it'll be too early to tell how that will impact um, or how that will be impacted. And then some of the other uh, industries locally, uh, let's say retail, small retail, that thing that identifies downtown Bellingham and Fairhaven and even Berkeley Village uh, to a certain degree, uh, that will also be interesting. Um, One of the... One of the caveats, again, trying to see the positive, maybe maybe searching really hard for the silver lining in this is we have a lot of residents locally that are still employed. They're still being paid. You know, when you look at uh, the two largest employers in our community, one is Peace Health. Um, they are overworked at the moment uh, at full capacity. Then you also look at Western, uh, where we have a lot of faculty and staff that are still being paid. Um, now, how that is will be impacted down the road because of um, state taxation and tax collections, we'll see. But in the near future, they're still drawing a paycheck. So the moment that these restrictions for restaurant and retail are lifted, you would assume there's a large number of our community members that are still that are still being paid, that still have an income. Uh, so the hope is we will be able to turn on some of our smaller economies and smaller industries fairly quickly when this is resolved. But we have to put in the time right now uh, to make sure that we're not overrunning our healthcare system, that we're taking care of our most vulnerable, and we're all doing our part. I mean, it's, as I've said, it takes a community to make a community. And it takes all of us, all of us pushing, or in this case, staying put. Uh, to make sure that we as a community have the best outcome for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. So for, um, for local businesses um, like myself, who has been you know, impacted by this, what resources are available for people? I know the SBDC is out there. Um, yes. What are some other resources maybe that the chamber is providing that um, we could point people to, um, to learn more or to figure out what their options are or to kind of start yeah. planning for, for rebuilding? 
Uh, you know, at this point, if it's technical or operational, uh, we are recommending everyone go to the SBDC. Uh, they are trained to engage in a business, particularly from, the, let's call it the financial statement perspective, and even to a certain degree operational. Um, so we're asking if you're searching for assistance and wondering what the best resources are uh, to go to the SBDC. I know last week they they had a large volume of, of calls. Um, and so we're asking people to be patient with them um, and they're doing, they're doing great work. As far as the chamber goes, uh, the best thing that we can do at this point is just provide quality information that's vetted. Um, and so when you go to bellingham.com, which we like to call as our front door to the community, uh, we've set up a quick four button uh, link for not mostly the business community, but also our, our residents too, for more information to say, here's the business resources that you need. Here's some special offers from chamber members. Uh, because again, there's still business being done. Yep. Um, here's the you know links to restaurants that are doing delivery and takeout. Um, here's, and a big piece of this is here's the health response. Uh -huh. uh, we're not going to be able to fix or start business until the response from the health perspective and the, let's say the public health perspective has been resolved or substantially resolved. And it's, a, it's important that we keep up to date with um, the, the health department and what the instructions are coming from the sheriff's office. And so they just have a brand new website that was launched this week, whatcomcovid.com. Um, and again, you can find all of this information at bellingham.com. We've set it up fairly simply uh, for people to engage and we can update those, those information, and those links as they come in. That's great. I've, I've definitely been encouraged um, on the positive side again to see businesses coming together and supporting each other during this time. And it mm -hmm. seems like the whole community um, in Whatcom County and Bellingham has really come together, uh, not only to support the healthcare workers, and there's a lot of projects that are happening to do that, but um, to support local businesses and to keep those people in mind, um, especially those that are hardest hit by, by all of this that's happening. So I don't know, are there, any, are there any ways specifically that individuals in the community could support local businesses who are being affected by this? I know there's definitely challenges in, in um, the stay at home order, but what, what can we do um, now or in the future as we come out of this and, and start ramping things up, what would you encourage the community to do towards our, our local businesses and kind of the, the fabric that makes up our local economy? I would say during this situation, first and foremost, we have to stay healthy. So we have to keep ourselves healthy, our family healthy, our businesses healthy. Um, so minimize the number of non-essential trips, even minimize the number of essential trips is key. Um, there are businesses that are providing uh, services, particularly from the restaurants. And again, that's the, that's the piece that I think is hit the hardest locally outside of maybe lodging um, that we can actually engage with and do something for. And as I said, there's a, there are a number of people in our community right now still being paid. So it's not like incomes have stopped across the board. There's certainly incomes that have stopped. So if we can support those, those restaurants that you really like, uh, continue to do that. Uh, I think it's best if you do a delivery or takeout. The curbside tends to be a, a popular option now with restaurants that have never done that before. Uh, and that's the identity of business. Business has, has always had to innovate. Um, whether we look at your business in 15, 20 years ago, something like what you do may not have been able to exist, whereas now it can. Right. So right. business, a core feature of any business is innovation. And we're seeing that through curbside and some of those delivery options. We have some delivery services that um, are serving our community as well. And so use those. Um, Gift cards are another option. We see a lot of businesses promoting that. Um, I tend to err on the side of, you know, buy food now uh, because technically a lot of those businesses have to hold those funds in reserve 
um, mm. for those gift cards. Um, and this way, if they're cooking food, uh, they're using some of their supply and some of their inventories. Uh, they're using more of their tools um, in maintaining operations. The situation is, of course, developing daily, mm -hmm. it seems. Um, hopefully, we're entering into a time of a little more stability, at least where there's some, some knowns that we can plan around um, until some of these restrictions start being lifted and, and all of that. But um, thank you for everything that you're doing in the, in the business community. And um, yeah, keep at it. Yeah we're all on the same team. Like kind of what you said is this community is known for rallying um, and being a very close knit community. Uh, and we still are, even since we're doing it via webcam and phone call more than we, we, we were three, four weeks ago. Um, and we'll get back to, to normalcy, hopefully in the more near future. Uh, but we will get back there. There is, there is a light at the end of that tunnel. Uh, we just have to be diligent and keep keep doing what we need to do to make sure that the light's still there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Guy, thank you for letting me into your home this afternoon and uh, for, for this chat. This is a new series on Bellingham tonight where you can find out more about local information, local people in the community doing great things during this, uh, this response and this extraordinary time. Um, if you like this content, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, give us some suggestions of who you'd like to see on the program and uh, we'll see you next time.